Although mountain bikes themselves can be quite expensive, just using a bunch of stuff you've got lying around the house or even some old bike parts, you can create some great hacks and bodges to keep your bike running smooth. The first tip to save you a bunch of money is considering the types of loops and degreases and things that you use. Now, by far, the best type of degreaser to use on a bike is going to be a dedicated bike degreaser because it does the job. It really cuts through all that grime and you can apply it straight from the can straight to the chain on the bike. However, here and there, you're going to want to do a proper in-depth deep clean. And although bike degreasers are excellent, it'll save you a bit of cash if you get yourself an industrial degreaser from a sort of an online place or a DIY store. Now this stuff isn't that kind to the environment, so you do have to be careful how to dispose of it, and of course you need to wear rubber gloves when you're using this stuff, it's very vicious. But tip number two to work with that is once you've degreased your chain in it, in fact here's a chain I've literally did the other day, this is actually super clean now, and that's ready to be lubricated and put back on a bike that I'm working on. What I've done is kept that degreaser for a few days. Now you'll find, Leaving this on the windowsill, all the crap sort of filters its way to the bottom. And although the degreaser itself is discolored, you'll find it will actually still be very powerful and will still get a lot of that muck off your chain. So it's well worth doing. So just by decanting this into another vessel, being careful not to get all the, the stuff from the bottom in there. That's probably about as much as I want to go. That is fairly good. And I can top this up with some fresh degreaser and pop these chains in here, which need some heavy duty work, and leave that to do its job. So it means I'm actually getting quite a lot of done with the same amount of degrees, and that can't be a bad thing, right? So you might have noticed that I was using the bottom half of a water bottle here. I tend to recycle most of the plastics in the house, but I use a lot of these things and reuse them for dirty jobs like this. Also, ice cream tubs, they're fantastic for putting degreaser in, putting chains in, really working them. You can leave these for several days, rinse them out, and just keep using them. So it's well worth considering what you're throwing away and what you're not. In particular, this is black plastic, which is quite hard to recycle by comparison to other stuff, so it's well worth reusing this stuff. Now, good old-fashioned milk bottles, I'm gonna show you a really cool thing you can do with these. Definitely worth keeping hold of some of these and turning these into a front mudguard. So our Scott Genius bikes come with a Syncros mudguard built onto them. I'm just going to show you how to make something very similar to that using a milk bottle. So firstly, you just want to take your front wheel out the bike. Won't be needing that in there for this. And basically, given the shape of that, it sits really well in here. It's quite a natural sort of fit. You basically just want to draw a line where you want that mudguard to be using a Sharpie. So at the front here, I actually want it to stick out a bit. So I'm going to have it come around to, let's say, here. Obviously, I'm going to cut this just above this. So this is just a guide for me of where I want it to be. It needs to come down on the side of the fork here so I can tie it to the fork leg. So you can pretty much follow the line of your fork brace in order to do this. And then the same at the rear. You want this to come out and have this kind of shape to the back there, using that curve that's already part of the milk bottle. You'll find it works pretty well. What I've got to do is cut this out now, this shape, put a couple of holes in the bottom here for a cable tie around the leg, and a couple in the top to run around the fork brace, and then Bob's your uncle. Got a homemade mudguard. There you go, all done. As you can see, this one's quite a small one. This is only a little four pinter. If you get a six pinter, it's going to be a lot bigger fender, but of course there's other household things you can use water bottles, there's a number of plastic goods you get with regular sort of day-to-day -day stuff, but keep this sort of stuff in mind because it is really useful and it's almost free because you've already paid for this stuff. Next tip is to hoard some of your old bike components as they wear out and keep them for spares. Now by all means you don't have to be like me and keep one of everything, but an old stem like this, I mean I think this is what, a, an 80mm stem perhaps? I'm probably never going to use this again. However, the four millimeter bolts, they're well worth salvaging. Now, this particular rear derailleur is one that is bent and I've already poached the jockey wheel and the guide wheel of this particular mech. Um, this one now isn't really worth salvaging, but in, in future, it's worth keeping old bent derailleurs, taking the jockey wheels off them. I mean, although these ones are dirty, they've still got a bit of life in them. This is a pretty ancient SRAM XO one of the limited edition pink derailleurs from, God knows, like mid 2000s, but worth keeping for spares nonetheless. And it's always worth keeping cassettes as well. Now on cassettes, you've got 
various different spacers, washers, lock rings. Now sometimes they can go missing, sometimes you can get an odd combination on a bike where you can't quite get the spacing right. It's always worth keeping those little spacers. They will definitely come in handy at some point. Make a point of trying to keep anything that could be useful, keep some parts trays together. Park make these quite cool ones that have got little removable tray inserts on the inside of them. Likewise, like the stuff I've shown you in the past, you can go to your DIY store, you can get those big clear cases, just like these in fact, that I use. These particular ones are just full of, I think this one's just full of screws. But just as an example, you can fill all your old bike bits in these. They're not that dear to buy and they're well worth keeping, keeping all your stuff nice and organized. Yeah. Now, although I've not got a bash guard on my particular bike, uh, the bottom bracket is not low enough on this to actually, I find I actually hit it, but on my nuke proof, I used to bottom out all the time. So I used to like running a taco style bash guard underneath. Now, if that's something you're concerned about, you can obviously buy one of those, or if you've got a triple style chain set that would take a multitude of chain rings on there, you can make your own one using an old chain ring. Now, the idea being, let's just say you had your bike set up with a one by, you're running your chain ring in this position. What you want to do is move it to the inner position, find an old chain ring that's slightly bigger, which would go on the outside, but I'm going to angle grind these teeth off here so it acts like a bash guard. You can do it with a whole chain ring or you can have just a segment of it to act like a taco just to catch, say, if you're best foot forwards, this is the part you're usually going to bash. Of course, this is a complete hack and it's only going to work if you've got an old style chain set, not like one of these SRAM ones that are on here with the direct mount chain ring. You can't do that with this. But I know a lot of you out there do like to convert bikes from three buys to one buys and that means that you will have spare chain rings lying around if you've done it, like the outer chain ring. That is your candidate for turning into a bash guard, so it might be worth considering. Now obviously using an angle grinder or any sort of cutting disc is an extremely hazardous activity. Now you might notice on my particular one I haven't got the blade guard on here. Now I choose to not use the blade guard, I don't recommend this yourself. I choose it because I find it is more accurate to actually get it in a position I like and I can see the actual point. Now always make sure you wear eyewear because stuff can fly up way faster than you'll ever be able to close your eyes and blink for. Wearing gloves is a good idea. And of course, making sure that there's no one else around that's gonna get flying stuff in their eyes. But I emphasize this is my choice to not use the blade guard on here because I wanna be able to see exactly what I'm doing without having to sort of look around and break my concentration. However, you might wanna keep your blade guard on your angle grinder if you're gonna do this. So there you go, that's not the neatest work I've ever done, I have to say, but recycled an old chain ring, turned it into a bash guard. You could lop it in half, like I said, and use it as a taco at the bottom, but the idea is that it just, basically just to protect the top of those teeth there. So, and if it's doing that, then that's a good job, because that was an old chain ring that was, wasn't in the best state. Reusable and free. Okay, so I've already told you I'm a bit of a sucker for keeping old household things and reusing them. This is another prime one. It's just a little contact lens storage pot here. Um, I don't use these, but I've robbed this one off the wife. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Um, sun cream, it's an ideal thing just to put some high sunblock or sun cream in there. Keep that in your riding bag. Back of your neck is one of those areas that most cyclists get really badly hit and you can quite often not feel it when you're out cycling. Now, if you've got moles, you especially wanna be sun safe. And if you're riding minimal, and you're not gonna be carrying a bottle of the stuff, this is an ideal little way just to carry some with you without getting it all over your riding bag. Yeah. Okay, so another little winning hack just to look after your bike is recycling old grips. Now you can't do this if you use any sort of lock-on style grips, but if you've got old fashioned, just regular push-on grips or foam grips like these random foam ones I've got lying around, you can reuse them in a really cool way. Now, dropper seat posts, they've got a stanchion tube. Suspension forks, they've got a stanchion tube. They're very easy to scratch, especially if you chuck them in the back of your mate's van for an uplift or back of the car, anything like that where you're gonna store them. So keep your old grips, snip them, and then when you put them in the back of the car or anything like that, you can just have a bit of protection directly on them, on the areas that are gonna contact with other bikes and stuff. It's a great little saver. Now protecting the end of your cranks, especially if you have expensive carbon fiber cranks, 
is a great idea because you can bash them on the ground and lead to further damage. You can buy dedicated crank boots. I mean, this is a SRAM one that actually came on SRAM cranks, but just for example, it's not compatible with these. I'll just show you, it would slide over the end. And the idea is that you can still screw the pedal in, but you strike it on the ground and this takes off the sort of impacts that would dull your paint finish down, put chips in there, or perhaps start delamination of the carbon fiber. Now, a good way to get around this without having to spend a fortune is to make your own. Now, something I often talk about is this 3M rubber mastic tape you can get from Scotch. Now, it's not the cheapest stuff. It works out about 15 quid a roll, but you can use this for lots of different things on your bikes. It's heavy duty rubber, it's quite thick, and you can get it in 25 and 50 millimeter widths. It'll stick to anything as well. It's insane stuff. It's really good for making chainstay protectors for. It's really good for putting the underside of the chainstays, even the underside of the down tube of your bike. But in this case, we're gonna make a crank boot for my bike here. So as you can see here on my crank, so I've actually got a scuff here where I have hit it on the ground, so I don't want this to get any worse. So I've really trimmed this down to size. I've cleaned it, so hopefully this should stick on properly first time. Run this around the end here. And then this stuff really, really does stick fast once you've sort of held it in place. And that is just gonna provide a little extra protection on the end of my cranks. Now when it comes to cleaning your bike, we always recommend using a proper bike-friendly cleaner that is not too abrasive or corrosive, in fact, on your bike paintwork. Now there are a number of other household items you can use. They're never gonna be as good as the real deal, but you can make do here and there. Now one of those places is by using simple dishwashing liquid in a place of a degreaser. Now I definitely wouldn't wanna use this to clean my bike with because it has got a fairly high salt content in there. And of course salt is really bad for that sort of stuff. But however, just for degreasing a chain, for example, if I was doing a deep clean and using some dishwashing liquid with some hot water and then dunking the chain in there, leaving it to soak and then giving it a bit of attention with a stiff brush, you can actually achieve some really, really good results. But of course, because it has got a fairly high salt content to it, you make sure that you want to clean this off properly and lubricate it afterwards. But I'm actually going to leave this for an hour or so and I'm just going to brush it away afterwards. You get a really, really good effect with it. But again, it's not quite as good as using the real deal, but you can get great results with it. Now you simply cannot beat the quality of decent bike componentry and tools and so forth, but I'm fully aware that a lot of people are still on budgets and have to have some make-do sort of products here and there. Now you can look online, obviously there's a lot of discounted retailers, bike retailers out there that offer very good value, especially on last year's componentry, but it's well worth looking at some of the bigger supermarkets as here and there you can find yourself some bargains. Now, of course, you get what you pay for. You can't expect that stuff to be very good and last long, but you can get stuff like floor standing pumps, car seat covers, and a whole number of other random things like trunk organizers that could be really useful for mountain biking. So definitely worth checking some of those online places. I've just seen a mini pump here. Um, I'm sure it's fairly plasticky and not that good, but if you need a pump and you're on a trip, or perhaps you, you're on a riding trip and you've forgotten your stuff back at home, you just want to make do, these sort of places are really useful for that. Now, another great way of saving money is being tactical about the time of year you start buying things. Now, of course, if you want to buy some waterproof shorts and a waterproof jacket and you're looking to buy them in autumn when it starts getting wet, you're going to be paying premium prices. The ideal start time to start buying that stuff is spring, summer. So you've got to start thinking ahead about next year or even buying stuff that's in a sale from the previous year. This works really well with summer clothing if you're buying it in winter, winter clothing, buying it in summer, wet weather clothing, pretty much anything you can think of. Again, if you're aiming to buy a new bicycle, it's worth waiting until the end of the year you're in. You might get some discounts on the existing year before the next year models hit the shop, so to speak. You can definitely get some great bargains if you just wait a bit of time and consider when you're actually buying stuff. So there we go, there's a number of quirky hacks you can do with random household goods and of course old random bike stuff you've got lying around. I mean, not really sure what I'm ever going to Hold on, I've got one more idea that I'm just gonna do with this old tiller of a stem. I'm sure I can turn this into something vaguely useful. Bear with me a second. (laughs) 
You know I'd find a use for that one day? <laughs> So there we go, there's a whole bunch of hacks and bodges and stuff that you can do with stuff you've had lying around for years, like old cassettes, tiller old stems from the 90s, and other random bike stuff. But of course, on a serious note, if you are gonna use any sort of power tools, be very sensible about it. If you're not familiar with using them, make sure you get advice from someone or have someone help you do that. I'm quite familiar with doing this, so I'm more than happy to work on that. For a couple more great videos, click down here for our Pro Bikes playlist. There's a whole number of super cool bikes, including the great Nino Scherter Scott race bike, which is just unbelievable. Click down there for those. And click up here for Fork Lower Leg Service. So that's a great service idea that you guys can all do at home. I know you can do it. It's not that hard, and it means your forks will last a lot longer and feel much better. Of course, as always, click on that round globe to subscribe to the channel. We've got new content for you every week here at GMBN Tech. And if you like making random stuff out of old bike bits, give us a thumbs up.